Shlomo, welcome to Spotlight. Individuals, groups, and civil society organizations have the right and the potential to stand up for their own concerns and to take their future with their hands. How much do we support them? How much do we know about them? Do we have a good knowledge about our major issues of our time? We will discuss more about these questions with Daniel Gabriel, a director of Syria Universal Alliance, Human Rights and NGO. He's also international lawyer. He is in a visit first Stockholm and first time on Spotlight in Syria Assad. Welcome, sir, to uh, Syria Assad. Hello, Maya. Nice to be here. Uh, uh, this is the first time that I'm having you on my show, and uh, I really would like to know more about you, to tell the, our uh, viewing audience about you. Uh, not much to tell, actually, um, but I, I work in London. Um, I'm a lawyer working in London. I also work for the Syriac Universal Alliance as the Human Rights Director. also work for the non-government non organization aspect of, of the SUA. Um, that non-government organization status allows SUA to represent the Syriac people at the United Nations, and that's what I focus on. Um, I focus on human rights issues uh, for our people around the world. Um, originally from Australia, uh, moved around the world, uh, many, many, many places. Um, been working in New York and Chicago and Paris and Amsterdam and London and different countries. Different countries, but uh, my primary focus uh, that I'm working on for the Syriac people is is with Sua, uh, working yes. with Johnny Messel. Uh, yeah, Johnny Messel. We say hello to Johnny Messel, and I I think that the next time on the spotlight, I really want to have you and Johnny Messel. So Johnny, if you hear me now. <laughs> it will be your turn next time together with Daniel. <laughs> Daniel, let's talk about the SUA, the Syriac Universal Alliance, for people who don't know much about it. SUA uh, is an organization which uh, has all of its federation groups from around the world it sit underneath SUA. So you have uh, the federations in, in Sweden, in Germany, in Holland, in, uh, in Belgium, in Australia, in America. Uh, these federation groups uh, under SUA, we work together with them. Uh, SUA is, as the United Nations body, uh, represents all of our people around the world. So I've been working with SUA for, for many years, but the human rights uh, aspect has only been for the last six months or so. I've been working for that, that position. Uh, both Johnny Messel and myself and the team uh, who represents SUA around the world have been working tirelessly <laughs> trying to restructure SUA, uh, try to make it more, um, uh, you can say, have a more communicative uh, yeah. aspect to it where we, we're constantly uh, interacting with our federation groups, okay. trying to understand what they're doing. Uh, and also help them as much as possible. Yeah, so. uh, I'll just interrupt here to uh, mention to our viewing audience that you can share with calling us on this number 08550402562. So, uh, what about uh, NGO organization? The non-government non organization, organization yes. aspect of the United Nations. Uh, this. Uh, this actually uh, is a great victory for our people. We, we can, as Syriac people, Syriac Aramean people, we can be represented at the UN. Uh, and what we do is, is that, um, and this is being restructured at the moment, so I'm, I'm in charge of that aspect to try to restructure it. Um, what we do is, is that we, we can work in Geneva, we can work in v Vienna, we can work in New York. And what we do is we, we focus on human rights issues for our people. So one of the things that we will be doing soon is we'll be looking at, for example, the More Gabriel issue, uh, yes. More Gabriel Monastery issue. So we will be going to the UN, whether it be New York or Vienna or Geneva, and we'll be doing a, a presentation to the UN about More Gabriel. And that's just one thing that we can do. It's, uh, there's so many more things we can do. We can represent our people for Iraq. We can represent our people not only for Tawd Abdin, but for other issues, cultural, uh, religious, uh, even to help the diaspora 
who are in need of help as well. I think uh, it's so, so important to have this position, especially the functioning of this position when you can communicate with, with, with people, with governments, with the international society to make us uh, be heard. Uh, let's talk about the, uh, I think it's uh, one of the most important things that you're focusing on now, it's the uh, San uh, Gabriel Monastery. Yep. Uh, I believe that uh, you were recently there in a visit of the uh, Suwa uh, delegation, if we can say that, uh, yep. to the Turabdin uh, following Correct. this matter. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, um, actually very interestingly, my, my first ever visit to Torabdin, to the homeland. <laughs> um, it was uh, just last week, both okay. uh, um, Johnny Messor and myself uh, represented Sua uh, at, in, for the trial, for the purposes of the Moore Gabriel Monastery trial. So you, and you attended the court? We, we did attend the court. Okay. Uh, there was also one of our other delegation, uh, Mushe, who was also uh, there as well with us. Uh, both Johnny Messor and and Moshe both went into the court, um, and if you if you think about the courtroom, it, it's a very very small area. It's, in what it's, place was that? <laughs> it was in Midyat. Okay. And um, so, what, you know, the, the whole Moore Gabriel issue is extremely important to all of us as Syriac people. Moore Gabriel represents the the heart, the soul, the spirit of of our people. It's uh, it's a it's a fantastic, amazing uh, monastery. Um, I've seen it for the first time in my life and I encourage everyone to go. It is, it is truly um, a blessing from God that we have it. Um, it's, it's more than 1600 years old, one of the oldest uh, remaining monasteries, functioning monasteries in the world. So when you go there and you see the land, you see the monastery itself, you see what has been built uh, by our people, you you really realize how important it is for us uh, to keep. What it. are the claims now of the government of the Turkish government? It's a uh, it's a bit of a mess. Uh, it's a, it's extremely complex. Uh, Turkish judicial system has never been easy. Um, in fact, uh, even the prime minister of Turkey, uh, Erdogan, uh, just recently said how how messed up, basically, the judicial system is in Turkey, that he wants it to be revamped. Um, in fact, the Constitutional Court Chairman of Turkey has just, I think it was either today or yesterday, and I'm going to quote him, says, mm. uh, there is no doubt that a judicial judiciary whose independence and impartiality has not been ensured will pollute society more, let alone purify it. A strong and impartial judiciary is a guarantee of democracy, secularism, and the welfare state. And what they are recognizing, in fact, is the, the impartiality of the judicial system. They are recognizing the, the inequality that is, that is so systemic in the judiciary, in the court system. And we are, unfortunately, the Syriac people are being punished by that. So. What's happening is, is that there are, just to give everyone a bit of a, yes. a flavor for what's happening. Yes, yes. Um, if, you, if you think about the monastery, you think that it, it sits on 1,772 hectares of land. You think that that's pretty big. It, it is quite big. Um, it sits in a village named Gungaran. Gungaran. My pronunciation is very bad, but <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Um, what you have around it are four villages. And so what, this is the map, and I'll just show you the map here. So this is the area? This is the area. Of the monastery? Of, of the, the monastery. Uh, so what you see around the monastery are the villages. Mm. 